Sofa of our guests are normally uh, quite uh, civilized at kitchen table or whatever, but today we've got uh, Schaefer Bates with us. So uh, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Demands. Bit of a bit of a different one. So um, as always, I'm going to uh, crack open uh, a Heineken. But um, you, what have you gone with today? I, I, got, I do. I got with a glass of wine. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much. For that. So. Um, I was, I was saying just off off pod, you know, you're, you're probably the first one actually that um, we've got no history as such. So no. I'm kind of going into this a bit blind. No, no. God knows what could happen today. Just two um, mates having a chat. Yeah, what's going on in your world then? Um, well, at the moment, it's bits and bobs. Obviously, living in in Cardiff, um, it's hard to be sort of involved with everything. Uh, unless you, the old chat usually is that. And uh, this annoys me, and anyone who follows me on Instagram, I always go on about this. Yeah. If you don't live in in London, yeah. Essentially, people from London believe that um, there's nothing for you. London, yeah. like everything, revolves around it's London. It's the centre of the world. Oh, Inspo City, man. Yeah. So it's like um, at the moment I'm just chilling and taking my time in Cardiff, but I still I still work in London. I keep yeah. back and forth. I I work with BBC One now and again. I do voiceover sort of Sky Atlantic. Yeah. I've done some stuff for Nickelodeon. Um, but people just don't, people can't, I don't know why I'm ranting about this yeah. now, but people can't believe if you're from Cardiff, you work in London, yeah. you commute to London every day. Well, not every day, like do, twice a week. Do you know Polly James? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she's obviously, she's on maternity now, but yeah. she, she left Cardiff to go back to London and uh -huh. uh, she did that a couple of days, but he absolutely loves it. It's, if you've been doing it a long time, it's just, yeah. it's an hour and 35, I hate London, so <laughs> I can't say, I lived there Couldn't for a year and a half. Yeah. A year and a half I lived there, loved it at first, and then I just find it a bit of a novelty living there now. I think a yeah. lot of people live there for the sake of, I think if you're not going there to pursue a, a, a good career or something that's secure, I don't see any point in being there. Yeah. I don't, and I'm being, re I mean, I'm being biased, <laughs> I hate it. I just think it's a miserable place. I think it's... Uh, every, every, I only go uh, for, say, like weekends or if there's an event or whatever. Yeah. Everyone's in a rush. Yeah. No one stops to just look and have a breath and go, oh, look, that's class. Just take two minutes. Yes, yeah. and everyone's miserable. Everyone's head down. Yeah, miserable. Miserable. The tube is a miserable place. Yeah. And then you'll get one person who is either singing a song or busking or, and it lights the place up. And you're like, I'm like, fuck, that's brilliant. Yeah. Lo absolutely love it. Yeah. Other people are like, shh, trying to read the paper. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the paper, right? like, you start joining in and being yeah. a bit extra with it and they're like, oh, fuck. He's crazy as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know why I went off on that rant in the introduction <laughs> of the podcast. I just every time people say, "What are you up to?" and then I, I say, "I'm in Cardiff at the moment." Yeah. I commute back and God, how do you do that? Oh, you should just live in London. London's great. No, New York's great. I is think I, even I think New York's amazing, but London, yeah. I just I think it's just a novelty yourself. to live there. So I was looking. I was doing a bit of research. Um, yeah, over the last couple of days. So. You, what was you, so YouTuber, yeah. impressionist, yeah. obviously voiceover. Uh -huh. Have you done any acting work or anything? I mean, I've done voice acting, which for me is essentially, well, essentially it is acting. You yeah. just the microphone and nuances are all there. But yeah, yeah I did um, Robot Chicken, which is um, uh, the creators of Family Guy, Seth Green and Seth MacFarlane. Um, I yeah. did that. Um, I think I actually played a character in Family Guy. Um, I've done stuff with Sky Atlantic for Game of Thrones. Yeah. Commercials, worked for BBC One doing commercials, done the Six Nations, stuff like that. But yeah. um, voice acting, yeah, I worked with John Boyega once on a Nickelodeon cartoon. That was my first acting job. And yeah. the guy had just come out of Star Wars, he plays Finn in Star Wars, and that, oh, was, a yeah, bit, yeah. that was a bit nerve wracking for me. But uh, was he like? Lovely, yeah, yeah. All, all of them, and I, I think he's brand new to it, so um, he had like his entourage in there. And, yeah. um, just a cool guy, the whole group were all pretty sound. There's yeah. another Welsh guy there. I, I don't want to be rude, but I can't remember his name, but he was funny. <laughs> um, but no, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to push the acting this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been really sort of lazy and bone idle the last two years. And some people say, oh, you look like you work hard. But no, no, maybe, I think 20, circa 2016, I'm great. I've worked really hard. Yeah. And I was like, the, the last two years, I've sort of just gone off off, off, off of everything. So yeah. no, I, um, this year I really want to push the acting. Um, next year, I mean, the end goal is to become a. I'd love to voice act 
even just a small character for Disney Pixar. Oh, yeah. But I'm talking, I'll be mid 30s. It takes you know, it takes years to break Hollywood. Yeah. It probably might not even happen, but um. And so, is that a bit about who you know and who you bump into and who you meet? And... Yeah, I think it's a lot of networking, a lot of nap tourism, I think. But um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I've got an agent out there who, who's shortlisted me for a few things for Disney. Yeah. But it's never never come of anything. So you, you, you've got a history with um, America as well. I was, again, obviously looking back <laughs> yeah. at some videos. Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. I watched yeah. that yesterday with John Snow. <laughs> that oh. was mad, that was. Yeah. So it was the three of you. Talk, talk me how you got through to that, mate. So, um, I was, that's so weird. That was when I first moved to Cardiff. So I moved... Where are you from originally? Uh, so I'm from Amgaveni. Yeah, okay. I moved from Amgaveni to London yeah. uh, with my partner at the time. Yeah. And then uh, that ended and then I, I came to Cardiff. Fell in love with Cardiff and then went back to London for a small stint uh, and then came back to Cardiff. Yeah. And uh, my agent rings me up and he says, oh, um, I've got you a, a place on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. I said, well, what? <laughs> I said, what are you on about? I just sort of started really doing YouTube and yeah. the impression stuff. He said, yeah, check your emails. And I had an email from Jimmy Kimmel's coordinator saying, yeah, we want you to come on the show. We want you to do a load of impressions. And I was like, oh, Fine. right. Are they going to play pay for flights and stuff? No, no, it's just on, you know, it's through a live stream. I thought, Skype. I thought still, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought, oh, oh, okay. I was like, still, he was like, it's a live audience and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, you can't exposure, it? Yeah, and I was like, oh, all right, okay, all right. And um, yeah, we, I remember we were setting up at like eight o'clock at night because it was, they, they film it there at like two o'clock in the afternoon, okay. or three o'clock in the afternoon. And Jimmy, and we were all on Skype and we all had to constantly stay like this and stare into the lens because, yeah. The British producer who was looking after them, I don't know who he was, but he was a knob to me. <laughs> he was a knob. Kept telling me, telling me off for not staring into the camera. But um, yeah, it was really, it was really surreal. Um, he, Jimmy Kimmel comes walking onto set in his dressing gown because obviously he talks to you before he goes into makeup. Yeah. And it was just weird chatting to him, and he's just asking you about how his life, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. And um, yeah, next thing you know, we were doing impressions for um, the Kit Harrington plays yeah. Jon Snow. And it was weird because, um, you, you know, like you can, it, I don't know, it's just bizarre. It's the stuff you can hear them say in, in your headphones behind the scenes and stuff. Yeah. And then they were like telling you to move your hair in a certain way so that you'd look like Kit Harrington. But yeah, I, that, that was really weird. I thought the one guy was terrible. I watched it back here. I was watching it last night, the middle guy. Yeah, now the middle guy. Uh, He's rubbish. <laughs> and then he had a sword at the end. And I was like, what the fuck are you playing that? <laughs> He's a nice guy. Uh, but I think he got that part because he was fucking friends with Karen oh, uh, on okay. set or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what happened. They were just trying to fill it up because I don't think they wanted it to be like a head, head to head between me and Steve Love, who was yeah. the other guy. He, um, yeah, he was decent to be fair. Yeah, but it did end up being a head to head yeah, because, because yeah. everyone online was like, because he he got a part in the show. Okay. He got a five minute part in the yeah. show after that. So he was in America. Was he the one who was in America? Canada, but he, Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he managed to get a part, a five minute part in the TV show. He had his head chopped off with a hound, <laughs> uh, and um, uh, he's great, Steve Love. He's like a hilarious comedian over there. But um, yeah. people should check him out. Um, <laughs> but my audience were going crazy, and people on the video going, "Why the fuck hasn't Chafe got a part?" <laughs> and I was just sort of sat back going. That's all right. I got to be on Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. And as the years have gone on, I'm going that little bastard. Bastard. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, as the seasons were ticking away, because this was like season four. I was going, yeah. I'll get to season six, and that someone will ring. So up. surely yeah, yeah. I've been doing it. I'll get that I'm, DM. Yeah, I was thinking, Christ, did they? Most I'm, I'm, I'm mates with a few of the cast members. I thought yeah. someone will go. I'll just put it in the background. There'll be a novelty. It'll be hilarious. And as the years went on, I'm thinking. It's never happening. I'll sell ringtones or something. <laughs> it's, honestly, I was like, you fucker. I, uh, and so have you been on TV before? Yeah, have yeah. Shows, what sort of... So my first TV show was a pilot for Channel 4 called Icon. Um, that was like a prank impression show. And it, yeah. it did really well for ratings, but it just... It was my first show. I was very nervous doing it. And, I, and the woman who was running Channel 4 at the time, I don't think, liked online talent. Yeah. Um, I've done the one show. Um, I did a couple of episodes of um, with with uh, Radio One hosting it with um, well not hosting it. You'd always get me on Dev from BBC Radio oh, One. Yeah. You'd always get me in if I do a video. You'd be like, yeah. "Want you up in London on Radio One doing oh. impressions?" Um, yeah, I've done the Mash Report. Uh, I've done a few bits and bobs, but um, nothing sort of. I mean, it, it made a dent back then, but British TV sort of like. 
brown bread now. I don't really understand which way it's going. I think with the, the surge of inter the internet and stuff like that, more streaming people watching streaming, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, I've sort of popped about in it, but yeah. if I'm going to push TV now, it'll be Netflix or something yeah, over in America because yeah, the Americans are. Oh, after Netflix, the fucking reaction from Americans, they're insane. I went yeah. over to New York like a few months later and I was brand new at, at sort of the internet. I think I had like 30,000 subs, which, you know, back then was incredible. Yeah. It's leaps and bounds since then. But I was in New York and people stopping you in the street over there. And you're like, how the fuck do you know I am? Like? Yeah, I know. I'm like yeah. insignificant. But American culture is just like, if you've been on something once 10 years ago you're always like oh my god it's him so, yeah, yeah. whereas over it's like oh it's that cunt who does impressions <laughs> come here don't an impression and you're like yeah. oh fucking hell oh, all right i was gonna i was i was thinking today should i just be really cliche like introduce someone else and you start, <laughs> start with david at the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> here we go <laughs> yeah that happened to me um in um there's the gold cross okay in the, the pub, yeah, the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was, um, they were trying to raise, they were, they were, well, they did raise a lot of money for charity. I think the floods in 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 oh, Wales. Valley, yeah. And I was really hungover, and I went there on Sunday. My mates in there with his missus. He goes, "Will you come down?" Because he was out with a few of his, um, a few of his gay friends. Yeah. And um, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll come down." And was really hungover, just mind my own business at the bar, trying to knock back a few beers to get, yeah. you know, back in the game, mate. And <laughs> they cut the music. And the uh, the drag queen on stage goes, you, you little curly head fuck. <laughs> and I went like that, because I can barely see like this fine. Yeah. Like, maybe somewhere like this. Look like I've got cataract. She goes, come here. And I went, no. <laughs> I'm not, no. She went, come up on stage now. I want you to do impressions. And everyone pushing me. Go on, no, get on stage. Say and no I'm going, either, can well, it's for charity yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh. He probably God. goes an asshole if he doesn't. <laughs> well, she said to me, so like, on stage, like, no. I don't want to ask you to do impressions because I've heard you don't like it. Yeah. But you're gonna look like a dick if you don't. And I just went, oh, I'm, like, I'm really, ner- I'm quite shy usually. I'm quite nervous about being on stage and stuff like that. And she had me doing, they did three impressions and then I did three impressions. Yeah. And it was great in the end, but I just, it's, if it's in a controlled environment, fine like this. But when people yeah, stop yeah. me in the street and go. Do, do this, impression. do that. Go on. I'm yeah. not performing monkey. Fuck off. Yeah, well, it's like saying to a plumber, well, yeah. you know, go up there and fix my sink right now. Yeah. Um, you pay me? No, I'm not. <laughs> get up there. And the thing is with impressions as well, I think I've been doing it so long, it's just a more like a pub trick for me now. So I yeah. don't, I don't, like when people ask what I do, I've always referred to myself as a voice actor. Yeah. That, that just so happens to do average impressions. <laughs> I think I got very lucky with it. I still stand by it how, this day. How did it start? So I was, again, just, just read. So did you put your first video up in 2010? Two, 2000, well, 2010, I think, was the first video I put up on YouTube. But the first impressions video was like 2012, 2013. Okay. It looked like it was recorded with a fucking toaster. It was a fun dog in there. I hope you don't start barking after it. You oh, shouldn't yeah. do it. He's quiet as a mouse. Schaefer. There we are. Let's get that right first time, mate. Schaefer. Oh. Don't be you anymore. Yeah, I'll get it. You there you go now. Um, D. Ready, Mal? Yeah. Cat Flap Chat's back once again. Um, a bit of a renegade one today. So, uh, actually, on the sofa of our guests are normally uh, quite uh, civilised, a kitchen table or whatever. But today we've got. Uh, Schaefer Bates with us, so uh, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Demands. Uh, bit of a bit of a different one. So um, as always, I'm gonna uh, crack open uh, a Heineken. But uh, you, what have you gone with today? I, I, can't, I do. I got with a glass of wine. Yeah. So uh, he's in. He, he, is Tom Hardy like? I love Tom Hardy. He's great. Um, I fucking love him. Yeah. He, he's class. But any character he ever plays, all sort of as a slight croak to the back. Yeah. So Ronnie Cray, legend. Yeah. Sounds just like. Uh, Alfie Solomon's or yeah. Blinders. It's all no Francis. It's all weird the teeth. And then he just goes a bit up there when you want to be Alfie <laughs> Solomon's mate. And then you see him in things like Lawless, and he's like um, you rather like moonshine and just weird as far yeah, as yeah, yeah. back here. But he's um, he seems like he could just snap at any yeah. minute. Yeah, I wouldn't want a bit to fucking loose like. I wouldn't want to. I mean, he used to be a bit of a mad 
Yeah, you, yeah, you hear stories and read stories about Burnley who used to be a bit of a Oh, yeah. I, I don't think if I ever worked with them on set, I'd want to take the piss out of him. Nah. Uh, I'd feel like he'd... Quite tasty, though. I've seen him in person. He's not... He's, he's about 5'7". He's not he's a not tall that bloke. Big, he's he? just so, like, naturally stocky and, yeah. and big. He's, like, a bit of a tasty man. I fucking love him, mate. I think he's fucking brilliant. Yeah, he's he's probably one of the best. How did um, how did you get into it then? How did it all start? Like, did you, did you perform an arts in school or anything like that? Yeah, I did, I did acting in school a bit of it. I never once went, that's what I want to be when I, when yeah. I, I get out. I wanted to be a fucking ski instructor. Did you? Uh, before that, there's a lot of boxing in my family, so I wanted yeah. to be... I, I trained boxing for it for a while and I, at one point I wanted to go professional but have you ever uh, uh, have you fought loads of times I'd say well the spoons um, no I know someone did like an impression yeah yeah <laughs> wind bells yeah um, we've all been there a couple of turbo probably he's probably shitting me like <laughs> <laughs> it's um, no I, I sparred but I never never fought what amateur I just I was, it was just more of like a bit of fun for me I think I was doing it between the age of like 15 and 19 and I think at that age you're full of testosterone and you're yeah. like well I do a bit of boxing I'll be the hardest hardest yeah. man ever and then hard to the back yeah and then people start oh shit I does boxing oh my yeah. god he must be hard no yeah. and I just did it because I, I enjoyed it and I, I did my, my stepdad trained me for a bit and yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of boxing in our family there's a bit of a tra- traveller's culture as well yeah. uh, I think that's dying out now <laughs> um <laughs> I just, yeah, I just, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what the catalyst was. I think it got to a point where um, I come out of college. Um, I did, I did six form. Didn't want to go into uni, so I went into college. Was that up in Abergavenny then? Yeah, so I did six form in King Henry Comprehensive. Yeah, and then I went to college in Ask. What's it like growing up up there? I'm a city boy, see, so I've always been in and around the city. Honestly, uh, I've been in Cardiff five years. Barely had any trouble. Yeah, lived in Abergavenny all my life, and I've had trouble, yeah, trouble, really trouble. Because <laughs> it's small town mentality. You yeah. see, um, um, a lot of people just want to scrap. If they come up to, for example, if they come up to Cardiff on a regular day, it's a big, yeah. it's a big, big day, day out. out. City. The bus is out. And all oh yeah, yeah, it's like a big day out. It's yeah, like yeah. going. To, it's like, and it's if they went to London, it'd be like, oh, they'd retire for the year. Yeah. Um, like it's a, so it's like growing up in Abergavenny. Um, I'd say you, there was no time for, if you wanted to go and, and make something yourself, you were a traitor, yeah. basically. As I, got a, I went back there a few months ago, because um, my tenancy was up on my last apartment, and um, I wanted to get this place, and it went ready yeah. for another two months. So I'm like, I'll go live with my mum for two months. I remember going out, and the fucking looks I got off some people. Like, you just never left the town. But people have a prejudice, you see. They assume that yeah. you think you're larger than life, and it's yeah. not the case. I usually keep my head down quite shy, but yeah, they're very much uh, sort of like you've made some of yourself, yourself, you're a twat. And, um, <laughs> it is, honestly. I know, mate, I know what you mean. And um, I've got, um, I love the town, I hate the people, um, and anyone from Abergavenny, not all the people, obviously, I've got some yeah, lovely yeah. friends there, but the majority of the people who go out Just in Abergavenny are not. Of- I got no problem saying that, and I got no problem them coming up to me and <laughs> saying it to me. I'm just like, shut your fucking mouth, yeah. <laughs> You'll do nothing. You'll it's not even that. It's just I just had so much shit from people. Yeah. Uh, for years, oh god, oh, you all oh, these voices you're doing, fucking sad cunts and all that. Can I say the word cunt? Well, you have twice in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, I won't leave it out. I can't give a shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm just like, I, I just, it's kind of like a fuck you to them. Yeah. 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 I said I was going to do what I wanted to do. Uh, as I said, I've been lazy for the last two years, so um, but I'll sort myself out. You seem, you see, I mean, like, oh, fuck, what do I know? You seem happy with what you're doing. You seem happy with uh, the way things have gone, and you seem happy with life. So yeah. people have got a bit of, bit of stick to say. Normally it's either jealousy, or they just don't fucking understand it, because like, they're not happy with themselves. <laughs> I have got a fucking punchable face, mate. <laughs> if anyone could punch a face, it'd be mine. <laughs> I punch my face, mate. <laughs> Would you? I would. It's fucking no. I the the last. Ha, I think for me, happiness has come in the last month. Yeah. Um, the last two years uh, have been like, like this with what I do because it's like you, you're only as good as your next job. Yeah. So it's like I, the way that 2015 and 2016 was sort of when Facebook and YouTube were really surging. Yeah. And I rode that wave and I got lazy because you come into money and you're like, ah. Oh, yeah, whatever, and I became an arsehole uh, for a while. Um, you about it? Yeah, no, I did become a, an absolute arsehole. Thought you'd made it? Not, not, 
not so much that. Arsehole within myself with money. Uh, I've, ne I've never walked around thinking I was really big bollocks. It's just not in my nature. It's yeah. not in the family. Uh, I mean, my mother would probably still take a fucking belt to me. <laughs> um, I just, um, I, I, in my, within myself, like I'd always be like, oh, I just, just doing stupid things, paying for stupid things, yeah. and saying I am the big I am in within my own internally. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was never really happy. I had a big group of friends that come out of nowhere then. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've got this TV show going on, Jimmy Kimmel. Oh yeah, you're, yeah. You're, all these friends. I go, oh, I have run into all these friends and my friends. And then obviously the money starts running out because brands don't want to work with people as much and they go yeah. elsewhere. And then I'm like, oh, all my friends are disappearing now. Sure. Whereas over the last sort of five months, I've got my uh, sort of work ethics back into place and it, everything's just going going great again. Yeah. I don't think there's a substitute for hard work, see. No, just no going, I completely agree. I've just gone, I'm going to work, fuck, I have to work as hard as I did two years ago and I've yeah. done it, stuck to it, and it's all it's all going well again. But um, So I'd probably say only in the last few months I've been happy again. Yeah. I'd probably say the last three years I wasn't really happy at all. I was probably in some dark places at some point. Um, only sort of coming to the idea of that now, like real to the realization yeah, yeah, of it. But I got freedom now to do what I want to again, and uh, I'm just, but I'm being a bit more selfless, I should say, with things. Yeah. Like, not, I, was a, I was a bit of a selfish prick for a while. <laughs> uh, and being a I bit think more, we all go through stages like that, though, in life. Yeah, or maybe. Did you? I, I, I do, like, because, you know, you do, at times, you do so much for other people, and then sometimes, it, like, for me, if I ask a favor back from some people, no, and I'm like, fuck are you, are you doing yeah, like, yeah. now I can't complain too much because everyone's given up their time for me to do this. Yeah, yeah. So I can't complain too much about that now. And if people cancel, move it, I'll never get annoyed about it now. Yeah. But like, there's been times, you know, where you either lend someone a couple of quid or I can't talk, so, you know, I've lent money, I've fucking, I've been in some dark places uh -huh. and people have helped me through it. Yeah. But now I'm like, I'll always try and give 51%. Uh -huh. And then I don't mind taking 49 because they've just got slightly more than me. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I, I, I heard it, I think, on like a business podcast. And um, just always try and give that bit more, yeah. but then I'm happy to ask the favour because exactly, I've given yeah. that. And then sometimes people go, nah. And I'm like, oh, okay, right. That 51% is going to start fucking changing. Yeah. You should start, I, I think everyone should be, I think everyone should be levelling each other up, really. I don't mean just like give opportunities to every Tom, Dick and Harry, yeah. but I think if you're really making a, a, an effort with something like yourself, people should be levelling you up and people should be going, check this out. Who's it hurting to go? Yeah. Promote this, promote that, and I—I I mean, I'm not saying start going to to like really famous people on Instagram. Put my put my shit up on your story. <laughs> yeah. Brands pay them to do yeah, that. Of but, course. But like, you, you know, like, like people should be networking, yeah. helping you out, really. And then, you know, if if they don't want to do you a favour, then well, I've got off them. I'm sure yeah. they'll be. The, exactly. it'll, it'll always come back round. Yeah, and then yeah. You you know they'll ask a favour of you then, and then you can just go. <laughs> yeah, no, see you later. no, absolutely not. I interrupted you just now when um, I said, "How did you? How did you get into it? How did it all start?" So um, you were in Abergavenny, obviously uh, college and all that. How did you get into? How do you, for, how do you know that you're good impressions to begin with, or start doing it? Yeah. How do you get into making the videos now? Because obviously back yeah. then YouTube, Facebook, that were, were fairly new. Yeah, yeah. And I remember yeah. Facebook in somewhere around 2007 or 8 maybe yeah. didn't know what the fuck to do with it yeah obviously we didn't <laughs> ride that wave like if i had done this 15 years ago yeah i'd be fucking joe rogan well i wouldn't be fucking joe rogan you might, I, mean, I wouldn't <laughs> be joe rogan <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can, that's yeah. one way of getting your yeah. podcast well, up it's fuck joe rogan yeah. <laughs> <head> together. <laughs> no um uh, I, I, I think for me i just i, I put this like I was 2012, I think it was. I put a Family Guy impressions video out. Yeah. I don't really do that anymore because Family Guy is very 2009. But if you do whip it out, people do go. Oh, I watch it. it. It's on BBC Three every fucking not BBC Three. Yeah, oh, I still watch it. Yeah, yeah, it's on like 11 o'clock every day. Yeah, yeah, it's still on. And it's like with our generation as well. Like a lot of people grew up on Family Guy. Yeah. And so I South Park first, and then South Family Park. Guy. Yeah, South Park. I fucking love South Park. Yeah, I'm not afraid to do anything. But with um. Yeah, no, I um I started doing Family Guy impressions. I just went, oh, this someone went, oh, that sounds good. And then I put it on Facebook. Yeah. And back then, viral was like a thousand views. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my God, it's gone viral. Um, And then I went, oh, God, okay, I'm going to start <coughs> doing stuff with this. And I started playing like video games and putting impressions into video games. So I 
played this game called Skyrim. Skyrim, I was yeah. looking at the videos last night. <laughs> oh, I did Gordon Ramsay Skyrim Nightmares. Yeah. And, and back then, they were actually good. Like, I mean, the, the setup of them, the impression was terrible. It was like, it was terrible. It was the worst Gordon Ramsay. It was like, I was having an asthma attack. He's like, I'm Gordon Ramsay, and here in my kitchen. It's like, what, what, what is this? I'm like, fucking Bear Grylls. Um, and it, it, like, that blew up for me. And then there's yeah. this big YouTube called Dialing Ping, um, who was like, a, like this online sort of, he was a troll, but in the right way, he bullied yeah. bullies. Okay. So we find out people who bullied someone's son on like an Xbox lobby yeah. or something. And then he'd go out with their way to torment them, which is, you know, <laughs> yeah. a bit mad. Um, like Batman for... Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. The internet, like. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, I didn't get a lot of people. I just started putting my videos up. Uh, my first video, I titled it, it was the first clickbait video I've ever done. Guy does awesome impressions in over five minutes. Now, like that's marketing 101. And I didn't know about that back then. I just went on, oh, I'm calling Guy does awesome yeah, impressions yeah. in over five minutes. People will always click that because it's like Guy does awesome. In if you just go like um, 35 impressions in five minutes, less people will click it. But anyway, I put that as the title. Uh, really clickbaity and everyone loved it. It just it went to like a million views over two yeah. days. And since then I went... Like I, I want to pursue this, but I always wanted to be an actor. Um, after I'd sort of realised I didn't want to be a boxer or a ski instructor, I went. I want to be an actor. <laughs> and it was, I know. Oh, I know. I, a good, <clears throat> I still do it now. My cousin is a ski instructor in France. Oh yeah. So six months over there, six months here. Perfect. Perfect. Who loves it, mate? You, you have two years. beers. It's like ten thousand feet above sea level, and you're pissed. It's lovely. <laughs> fresh as a daisy. Yeah, wake up fresh, all the oxygen. Exactly. Oh, so nice there. I, I wish let's. I will come there. Fuck off. No, <laughs> fuck, fuck off to Maribel after this. Give yeah. you, give you, give your brother a ring. No, it's um, no um, yeah. With me, it was just like I did that, and I said I always wanted to be an actor. I watched um, I remember being in the job centre, and I watched Mrs. Doubtfire because Robin Williams. I'm a big fan of him. Yeah, he's like my idol. Um, he was my idol. I should say he still is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was um, he says he's in the job centre, and she says. Well, do you have any skills? And he says, I do voices. And I was like, I've always done accents. And I just joked, and this isn't cliche, this isn't bollocks. I said it to the woman. I said, um, she said, do you have any skills? And I said, I, I do voices. And she went, oh, you do voices? She didn't go, what do you mean you do voices? I mean, you do voices, dear. Yeah. And I laughed, and then I went home. And since then, I just sort of had an epiphany and went, I want to, that's what I want to do. do it, yeah. I want to be Robin Williams. I love his improv, his <clears> off. Because <throat> with all my, most of my sketches, they're very much just off. I put the camera in front of me yeah. and just go, go for it. Um, and that's what I loved about him and yeah I just that's sort of how it started just I, I, I would have been a bit more interested than said drugs <laughs> a lot of drugs it's like lot, one day it lot, just came to me and... yeah a lot of party drugs yeah. uh, and I went wow I'm a fucking voice actor <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it wasn't it just that was it I just uh, so like a hobby almost to begin with it's a hobby, when did it start yeah. becoming a career it's like, oh, what you, you, I was like, in, you've um, got like almost one and a half million Facebook likes now. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, masses on Instagram, fucking tons on YouTube. Uh, yeah. YouTube. When did it start becoming a career? It might still feel like a hobby in the fact you love it. Yeah, yeah. But when did it start paying um, bills and... After Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel is still to the state the reason I am where I am. 100%. Because the opportunity... We, it got to a point where I was, had to turn down work. Like we had to turn down work. We were like, we can't take any more. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Um, but it, I think over the last three years, uh, I, I sort of swapped managers. Uh, um, my old manager, Ed Griffiths, bless him, great manager. Um, he works for Elton John now, I believe. Um, <laughs> um, I got another manager who was more sort of great manager, but more focused on making me money as quick as possible. Yeah. And it took away from what I was really doing about it. Like, I don't want to sound wanky, but the, the way I was doing it was because I liked making people laugh or yeah. I liked, I, I wanted to act and, and make people feel a certain way when they watched me. I didn't want yeah, them to yeah. go, oh, how much is money he earning from that? So I think doing impressions for the last two or three years has earned me more money than voice acting, for sure, but it's it's or, or, or kept the roof over my head, but it's, t it's totally derailed me from... Not now, obviously, but it totally derailed me from where I wanted to go. Yeah, because um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's dog eat dog will the internet. So I suppose there's always someone new coming through. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> obviously now, like, I'm, I'm fucking too old for it now, but 
you look around now and everyone like nowadays you ask a kid what do you want to be oh youtuber or an influencer yeah, that's right, or yeah. whatever and, and i don't think people realize actually the hard work that goes into it but if it was easy everyone would be doing it well that's fucking true yeah it's not it's not easy and the thing is uh, I, I was speaking to my mate about it yesterday. She said, I, 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 I'm a makeup artist. She does prosthetics. Yeah. And she said, I want to, she said, my, I, I'm thinking about getting into like sort of Instagram and stuff like that because I've seen this, that, and the other doing it. I've seen this doing it. Number one, half of it, 90% of it is a facade. Yeah, yeah, Most yeah. of them come across that they've made it. They haven't. Yeah. Um, Still living on credit cards. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they are. They're, everything's on tick. Um, yeah. We know that because... A lot of us have been in the industry so long that we yeah, like, yeah. we all know each other. We all talk to each other, and we all know who's skins and and who's got them and who's flaunting it like they have it. And um, a, a, another thing as well is like um, it doesn't matter how talented you are at something, people will judge you off you. Yeah. They don't care if you're talented at something. Yeah. Um, you, for example, I do impressions on the internet. People go out their way to tell me how much they fucking hate me and want to kill me. I'm like, <laughs> mate, I'm doing fucking voices. Do you know yeah, what, yeah. do you know how sad that is? You've, it's yeah. like walking into my living room and I've just had a carpet fitted and going, well, this is fucking shit. And I'm going, how yeah. did you get in? Why, why are you insulting my carpet? Get out. <laughs> it's, it, 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 people will always judge you on you. Uh, yeah. It doesn't, they'll, talent comes second or third. If they don't like your hair, your eyes, how you dress, Honestly, that's half the battle, yeah. and it's it's shallow. It's a very shallow, horrible industry. It's like Hollywood. How how do you deal? So again, I've spoken to obviously a lot of sports stars already, and and everyone who's come on, I've kind of asked them because this has come up. How do you deal with the fact that pe the internet's obviously given everyone a voice? So yeah. you've got so many armchair wankers now yeah. sitting behind baby six nine four six four six four on Twitter, Ice Cold Killer, who fucking yeah. Yeah, yeah, who's chucking abuse out. How much? How much do you get? Or how do you deal with it? And has it affected you? What's um, your mindset towards it? Or I think when I first started, it did affect me. But I, I again, as I said, it's very doggy dog world. I'm very thick skinned. Yeah. So, like some of the jokes I make on my channel are very dark humoured within yeah. context. Yeah. So people can say I I truly believe any people can joke about anything. Yeah. As long as it's tasteful. Yeah. Um, it's like Ricky Gervais has always said this oh, target that's what subject yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always a good joke yeah. um, if you don't like it fine you don't have to listen well, to it he, he, goes, the he goes rape isn't funny the joke's about rape yeah well, it's, it might be, it, it funny it's but, really, you're like, oh, fuck. but I mean I wouldn't make a joke about rape no, on the basis either. because I'm not, I don't have a quantum physics brain like Ricky Gervais does yeah. I can make a joke about anything else or structure it but yeah. like, he could probably could but um no, I, I, I don't pay attention. That's because I'm a realist. The majority of people who leave you shit, and this goes for anyone, look at their profile picture. It's usually a picture of a football crest, and they're like <laughs> Barry, who's 50, who's from fucking uh, Millwall or something. Yeah. Like, um, <clears throat> the best thing you can do, the best revenge you have is in your head, is they are insignificant. They're a 50-year-old yeah. man or some twat who's got nothing going for them. Yeah. And that can sound as egotistical as you, anyone thinks. Good. It's better to be egotistical than have someone uh, who's 50 sat at home with yeah. a chip on their shoulder thinking, God, I'll have him now. Um, obviously, with the Caroline Flack stuff, um, that, that, you know, that's, that's, that's tragic. That's really sad. Um, I think it's both media and social media. So, yeah, yeah. you know, two different quantums of the, the media. But I just... I think just bite your tongue with it. If you want to reply and shoot it back with them, do it back with them. Sometimes I've I've gone back to someone and done reverse psychology. They've gone, bro, you're, you're fucking shit. You're the most overrated impressionist on the planet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I mean, that doesn't insult me because it's like, what about my two other jobs? They're yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like maybe... One out, out of three, then I'll take that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Christ, Bradley Cooper was an impressionist before he did what he did. Was so he? Was Owen Wilson. Yeah. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, loads of... There's like half the people on Saturday Night Live did impressions of... They don't. You're doing impressions of people. Do you yeah, know? You're yeah. not. You're not going to be like. It's not um, hurting anyone. Yeah, you're not going to be the best on the planet. So when people go, "You're most overrated," I go, "Well, at least I am rated." So exactly. Who's much. rated me? Show, sure, bring them in. Like. Yeah. Um, so I, I just say literally, just sometimes shoot the shit with them. I've yeah. done it before. Someone's been like, "You're a cunt. Fuck you, man. Look at you. You look like Mick Agnola." I'm like, "All right, simply red." <laughs> Pleasure of the day. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I just go, "I'll reverse psychology with them." I go, "Oh, no worries." Darren, cheers for watching, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And I guarantee they'll always come back and go, 
oh, I'm only joking, mate. Yeah. I really you love this stuff. Then, you go, you? Yeah, and then I literally go, fuck you, mate. Yeah. Oh, God, bad you there. Fuck you, you friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you've just got to be clever with it. If you can't handle it, don't do it. Simple yeah. as that. It, it, it's the same if you went to Hollywood uh, and you have a casting director going, well, you're short and ugly, so you can't be in this film. And you're like, oh, okay. Go play an orc in Lord of the Rings or something. So you just got to be tough. I'll be the best it. fucking orc going there. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> but if, people, if people are horrible to you on the internet, block them. Yeah. Um, and then, they, you know, just keep your head down and get on with it. It's, uh, I just deal with it. I don't think everyone can deal with it, but it's in the street is the, where I can't deal with it. Is, do you, have you had that before? Uh, yeah, a lot. And it's usually... getting you get in Cardiff a lot? Um, most people in Cardiff I'm friends with, and it's lovely. Yeah. But mostly... In like, when I go to London, a lot of people stop me there, and people are actually generally nice because, as you said, they're trying to just get the put their head down and get on with their day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they usually mess with them. Like, oh, hello, mate, can I have a show for you? Yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in Cardiff, people literally grab you, yeah. and 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 sometimes it's like if I and it sounds There's no like boundaries sounds, in town. I know it sounds fucking terrible, this, but because <clears throat> uh, it sounds like if I punch someone and someone just so happens to film that, uh, yeah, it could be anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, then, and then a brand goes, well, you fight people in the street. It's like, I won't get brand work again. And even, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I get a lot of people who come up to me and it's usually, oh, Pat, oh, John Snow. And I go, just put my thumb in, come here, do an impression. Nah, mate, I'm all right. Oh, fucking arrogant, do you are that? And I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck you now. We're usually people from Cardiff, it sounds. Yeah. Oh, nice one, bro. Just do an impression of me. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I won't. I tend not to do it. Depends on who's on him. But yeah. most people are quite understanding. But usually I struggle in, in person because you do want to go, fuck, I'm going to box this cunt's ears <laughs> off now. But most of my mates are like, they're a Tyson. They're whap. Fuck you off, you tosser. <laughs> um, it just, it, most of my friends are all like sound. They're like, yeah, yeah. they'll go, they'll do it for me. They'll go, mate, fuck off. Because yeah. it's usually bully boys. It's yeah, people, yeah. It's, like, it's the same dicks who used to try and bully you in school who go, yeah. well, I do an impression. It's the same people. You yeah. see, they're like, fucking okay, loud mouth, fucking Roy Dead from up top. I don't know. But usually, most people are sound. Here we are, I'll have most of the Ronda Valley's trying it's to what I say, next time you're out now, you're going to get cornered. Yeah, yeah, you uh, here we go. Come on, Ed's raw punch, man. Okay, <laughs> now. <laughs> what's um what so obviously for years now you've been doing this what have been the most requested in what two things what's what's been the most requested impression what's the maddest thing that you've been asked to do whether it's for a brand or for work or can whatever. i say anything in you, to that. if you want me to i mean i have anyway <laughs> okay. yeah exactly um the most requested impression to be fair, with what with what I do, I try and keep things pop culture. Yeah. So I won't do, you know, I won't do like your um, your fucking, you you know, your go to impressions like fucking. Well, Donald Trump is a go to. <laughs> what are, what are some go to impressions now that impressionists do nowadays? Like fucking. Oh, it used to be. It used to. Be, I can't remember what the guy's name was. He used to do it all the time. It would always be Beckham, Victoria, and. Oh yeah, like Beckham, Victoria, name. and then people will do like fucking. Um, like Tony Blair or something oh, yeah, like that, yeah. like all like old school. He used like, to be a guy. He used to do it all the time. And he was on TV. I can't Rory Bremner. No, not Rory Bremner. Tom Coleshaw. Tall with brown hair. Um, I can't think of his fucking name now. Oh, uh, Christ! Uh, yeah, thin the, the, the big face. nose, big nose, and a thin face. Yeah. What do you mean, Peter Serafinovich? I don't know. Uh, it's like you're describing Gonzo or something. Yeah. No, he, he, he looks like him. Uh, not Peter Serafinovich. He's great. Um, no, I, I, I try and keep things pop culture. So, like, yeah. it comes in waves. I mean, like Game of Thrones, then it was Peaky Blinders, then yeah. it was The Witcher. Uh, now, at the moment, it's Gordon Ramsay. Anything Gordon yeah, Ramsay yeah, I do. Yeah, so, I try and keep things very niche, but also yeah. pop culture. I'll try not to just do, you know, like, fucking the same sort of impressions all yeah. the time which I do I just change the sketches out um, but um, yeah what was the other question after that what's the maddest thing you've been asked to either do for its work or you've done and been like fucking hell that was berserk I was <clears throat> I was filming my show for, I can't believe I'm saying that it's fucking terrible I was, I was filming my show for Channel 4 and because they didn't have like a big budget because it was a pilot yeah. I'd bring more wigs and costumes up with me <clears throat> so they put me in this lovely hotel in London, the Caesar Hotel, uh, around by Paddington. Shout out to Caesar Hotel. They <laughs> put up with me for a while. Um, Get a free night now. Yeah. 
and I, I met a lovely woman on a night out. Really lovely. I've been texting her. Okay. Yeah. And um, and uh, we 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 met up, and uh, we went back to my hotel room. You know, just to have a coffee. Have a coffee, and yeah. you know, talk stocks and shares. Chew and the grass. Chew the fat. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. And um, we ended up engaging, Mike, in uh, sexual intercourse. <laughs> okay. Uh, missionary um, only, forehead kisses. Like well from the in between us. <laughs> yeah, that was it actually. Well, I, I, he's got a lot to teach me. Um, <laughs> um, she knew what I did. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a bag of wigs and costumes. Oh uh, wow! And uh, she demanded. She went, um, "Do do me as Jack Sparrow." So she she said, "Do Jack Sparrow, right?" Yeah. And I was just like cringing. Like, I'm not doing that. She's like, go on. She's like, she's like, do it. And you know, I did it. Yeah. I was like, fucking this is stupid. And she, she, she thought it was great. You know, a, a mid coyotes. Um, and I was like, I was going, and as time was going on, I'm going, this yeah. And she goes, go for the band down wrong and the, and the, 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 the tune neck. Yeah. No, I said, I ain't doing that. And I'm not doing that. No way, I'm not. Absolutely not. It's not happening. This is the time you almost she, fucked. Jack she, she was like, yeah, <laughs> gentlemen, this will be the day you almost fucked Jack Sparrow. Um, she went, <laughs> she goes, uh, she, she certainly wasn't a gentleman. Um, she said, go on, go on. And I thought, oh, she's, she's very attractive. <laughs> Put it all on, no kegs on, just the tunic, the bandana, the wig, yeah. with my hands on my hips. Full mask. Um, and, and and I did. I had sex with her as Jack Sparrow and continued to talk like Jack Sparrow for the two seconds that I lasted. No, for the the, the, the time I, I went. And that was probably the weirdest thing ever. And uh, I'll mention her names. Um, yeah, I, I, I never saw her again. If you ever um, meet Johnny Depp, choice. you've got to fucking tell him that. You were well, the only reason I had a very good night in the Caesars Hotel. <laughs> Do you think you'll turn around and go... Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. I've yeah. Done that. I've done that. hundred percent, he has, pal. Yeah, you know, he just has to be Johnny Depp, doesn't he? Quirky, like I know, quirky looking. That's what a class that is. As he is, he what a guy. Shag the bird as fucking Johnny Depp. <laughs> Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Johnny Depp, I'd be fine with. I just let my hair down and put one of my hats on. I just That's fucking Jack. And I was going for it as well. I was kidding. No, oh. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Don't be, I can wait. I can, can imagine the scene. So oh, I, can, I feel bright. <laughs> I've only brisked on that story on I any hope, podcast. I hope like, any of your family know about this, because uh, if it does, you know, for, for the four listeners I have got, it might get out. I mentioned this on True Jewelry podcast years ago, but not to this detail. I just skimmed it. I went, oh, I've asked me asked to do impressions in yeah. bed. And they've gone, I bet, like, what? You have drugs, bro. And they've gone, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, and they try to go into it and change the subject. This is. this is exclusive. Thank you very much for cat flap chat. Um, yeah. We're all in. What's, is there ever been anything where you've gone, nah, that's too far? Like, whether it's a brand or um, doing the, you know, having you running around fucking doing all sorts of shit? Uh, oh, God. Um, no, no, I would say I, I hosted the socials for Now TV at the National TV Awards. Yeah. And, um, like they, they wanted me there sort of interviewing people. I don't interview people, I, I voice act them do impressions. Yeah. So they're yeah, like, yeah. will you interview people but do it in impressions? It went really great, it was lovely. Met Jeremy Kyle, knob. Uh, <laughs> Peter Andre, Ross Kemp, I remember Johnny Vegas dry humped me on the carpet. Lovely. Um, and, um, but they wanted to dress me up in a, um, a full golden glittery tuxedo. I wear some mad clothes. Yeah. I'm in my hiking gear today. Don't judge me. This is just this is dress. Dog walking, is it? Yeah, dog walking gear. Yeah. Um and um yeah, just just, just little things like dressing up in a, in full gold tuxedo. It's just but nothing really like is. I just thought that would have been a bit weird in front of like all yeah, yeah. TV stars. I'm at the top of the carpet waiting for everyone in a gold tuxedo with <laughs> gold like shiny gold yeah. shiny shoes. I was a bit like you may as well put a fucking chicken suit on me. Um, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. They didn't. Go ahead and do that. Nathan Palmer designed me a beautiful tuxedo. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping yeah, to get he's, him, in, him in on this. At he's some point. a genius, that man. Yeah, brilliant. He got Jane, J- Dame, Dame Judy Dench, was yeah. it? I think she came up to me and went, I think it was her or it was some kind of Dame. 
uh, said, you look absolutely lovely, darling, but please sort out your collar. It's my collar, your bow tie, and she adjusted it. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, but no, <laughs> I never... Cheers, love. Cheers, love. I know, it's like, geez, it's like your nan come up to you and sort, <laughs> sort everything out for you. But no, I've never really been asked to do anything daft. Uh, I mean, I've done a few questionable brand deals for a bit of, you know, cash flow's been short, but... Yeah, money um, talks. Yeah. Um, Oreo being the funniest one I've done, but you know, who can say they've done a brand new with Oreo? I had three Oreos for six months. Did you? I'm just, that's, I hate Oreos now, I'm sick of them. <laughs> but um, no, I, yeah, I've been quite safe with it, to be honest. Yeah. I think I've had my days of, of selling out. But then when people used to go, oh, you're, set, uh, you're selling out, I just go on my services, we're always for sale. Yeah, <laughs> that's my job. Yeah. No, no, I, uh, no, I've probably been all right with it, just never, never really done anything too daft. What's the um, what's your favourite uh, impression or favourite uh, sketch that you've done? What's the go-to one? If someone said, "What do you do?" and you had to show them, what would be the one that I'd probably say Gordon Ramsay right now because yeah. I can just do good. Anything I do with Gordon Ramsay just bangs, and yeah. you can do anything with Gordon Ramsay. Like the next sketch I'm, I'm doing is uh, there was an argument on Twitter the other day. It was trending that people were arguing about how, how you're supposed to make tea. Yeah. Tea bag in water, then the milk. milk. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to do Gordon, Ram Gordon Ramsay teaches you how to make a proper cup of tea. Now you can only envisage how that's going to look because <laughs> uh, I did the other day Gordon Ramsay on pancake day. He yeah. shows you how to make perfect pancakes. Yeah, that's Christmas right. day I did Gordon Ramsay shows you how to make the perfect Christmas dinner. And they all go, people it's, love them. It's, it's, it's one of the old ones you did, I think, with a steak. And you were seasoning it, and there was oh, a little, little like, TikTok, yeah. Was like, man. And there was fucking tons of salt on it. I had that afterwards. You? Well, that's probably why I had to have a heart scan today. <laughs> but I had to go through the roof. Salt for days, like. Oh, mate, it was, um, yeah, I, I made a lot of vegans angry with that. I don't know why. It was just me slapping a piece of meat. <laughs> I often do yeah, that on some days when I'm hangover in the toilet. Yeah, not normally in the kitchen, but. Uh, yeah, no, I don't salt it either. <laughs> <laughs> like a slug. Um, <laughs> I think it's already cured. Oh, lovely. <laughs> the, um, the video that I was crying at, uh, I said that earlier, the, um, you ring a builder's merchant. Oh, yeah. Down as, in Port Talbot. As Jon Snow. Jon Snow. Yeah. And you ring him back four or five times. I won't say, people can watch it. Right? We'll put a link up and they can, they can watch that. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. He loses yeah. his shit. Did you ever ring him back after and go, pal, you've just made me fucking 600 quid doing that or whatever? Well, like. That video, I didn't expect it to go that well. And I was having yeah. an hour and whether to put it out because we're in such a uh, a society of PC, uh, PC nasty, yeah, yeah, yeah. as it were. I was worried that people were going to be like, oh, you know, you're harassing. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, no, I'll put it out. Um, that guy went nuts. Yeah, uh, I did ring back. There was a part two. I rang back and an Irish gentleman answered and I kept asking for Steve. And he said, Steve only works mornings, I think he said. Yeah. <clears throat> but I rang back a few times and Steve never answered anything. Never, so yeah. I think they had, because I don't withhold the numbers, Steve. Uh, okay. Because usually they won't answer. Yeah. Um, but he, Steve's never answered. But uh, I will I will go for it one more time. <laughs> I will. Please get Steve on that. Because he's got to have seen it by now. So. Yeah, 100%. And it'd just be funny 100%. just to ring him and go, you fucking... <laughs> You can't. You fuck, just keep getting him shouting at me and me just to keep staying in character. Oh, mate, it's fucking funny. I mean, the, when you read it, you say, like, um, <coughs> I'll kill you, you bastard, I'll have your head. Yeah. He's like, no, you're a fucking prick. Fuck off. You, I'll kill you. I'll behead you in your own blood. <laughs> you fucking stop winding me up. Yeah. Ring Steve, that was he's it. Ring fucking, Steve. Oh, mate, he's lost it completely. Some of the older ones I used to do, I used to ring Gumtree adverts. About firewood, as Jon Snow, I like to buy some of your firewood. This guy I rang up every day saying that, yeah. and I was going, "What type of firewood is it?" And he'd be like, "Oh, but it's just it's just bits of decking and some old logs that we've used before. They're all seasoned. Seasoned. That sounds like sorcery." And he'd go, "Listen here, buddy, stop wasting my fucking time." <laughs> and he got it on a video, and it's I, I remember I did it every day, rang him every day. Stop wasting, and he realised it was my mate. Listen, stop wasting my fucking time really losing his head. The most peculiar accent ever, but I try not to do it too much anymore. There's it's... another one as well. I think it was, um, was it Jack Sparrow trying yeah. to buy a ship? Trying to buy from uh, a 
a boat a dinghy company or something. He's going to buy a dinghy, yeah. <laughs> and I said, has it ever, has it ever sh- sailed around the Caribbean? He's like, it's a fucking yeah, dinghy. Yeah, can, 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 can I put this up in port somewhere? But yeah. He's like, the fuck you want about that? He's like, you want drugs, pal? I said, are you on drugs, mate? <laughs> no, just rum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all old then, man. I've got to well, start doing it. You've inspired me to start. I mean, I've started doing the prank calls again recently. Some of the, some of them were. I was honestly, my well, missus is in Ireland, and I've spent a few days just watching them because yeah. I, I love phone jacker and face yeah, jacker. So, yeah. So for me, they were fucking super. Prank good. Oh, oh mate, yeah. fucking loved them. Man. Classic. They're a big inspiration for my channel, right? Yeah. Old face jacker and phone jacker. So like when I was watching them back, I was like, oh mate, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to rewatch both series now. Yeah. Fucking class. I wish he'd come back. I don't think really. He's big in Hollywood now, that guy. Is he? Yeah. Just go straight in the name. Yeah. Class. What's next for you then, pal? What's going on? What's uh, coming up in the world? I you think you can talk about. I think I signed a release to say this. Um, well, I, don't, well, I don't know if it gets picked up. I I, I recently shot a, a deep fake show with a production company. Deep fake is essentially. I don't know if you've seen the Irish one. The Not movie. yet, actually on Netflix. No, I haven't. It's a deep fake. You've probably seen it on the internet. Is where they CGI a celebrity's face on yours yeah. and it looks. Yeah, yeah. So they're trying to do a TV. This particular production company trying to do a TV show based on it. I played a few celebrities on there. They're pitching it to Netflix, I believe. Hopefully Netflix pick it up. Yeah. I filmed it back in the end of January. So hopefully something comes to that and yeah. it'll be over in America, I think. Uh, but apart from that, a uh, couple of stuff coming up with the BBC. Yeah. Um, and hopefully working with Gordon Ramsay because he's starting a TV show as he was on BBC One. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite chummy with the BBC one lot, so hopefully uh, my friend Nick Robertson can uh, <laughs> sort me um, can sort me some some content with Gordon Ramsay because everyone all, everyone yeah, wants yeah, to yeah. see that. It'll have to happen. He's got to have seen my shit. Was, I just wanted to insult me. I was, was, was going to ask who is, has anyone ever picked you up or replied to it. So if you've done the you know if you've done Tom Hardy, has he ever liked it or? commented like that up there just a, a couple of the Game of Thrones cast I, I took off Tyson Fury he followed me yeah uh, and then I messaged him not to do the impression but just went you know uh, good luck on your first fight with Deontay and he said thanks Bob <laughs> um, but um, no I no, no, just yeah a couple of cast members none of them are really common on it because the thing is when you're doing impressions of someone your internal voice sounds different anyway okay. so you'll never if you started doing an impression of me and everyone thought it was good it's never going to sound like me in my head because yeah yeah it's like your phone voice sounds different. I hate my yeah. voice on here, pal. Yeah, I fucking same. hate it. I'm the same. I absolutely hate it. I'm I feel like I'm really squeaky and I come across camp. I say That's how I feel. Like I when I hear about. I feel like I. I feel like I got um, a drunk or something. I was just like that. I hate my voice. It's all the Jack Sparrow, mate. Just like that. You <clears throat> mentioned a lot of Jack Sparrow on the internet, not you? Mate, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> I, love, I love quirky, peculiar uh, characters and people, which is yeah. why I love Tom Hardy. Yeah. Love him. I just love that. Yeah. Um, the, 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 almost the madness around genius, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That, that yeah. renegade. Yeah. Fuck, you could go off at any point here and it'd be fucking brilliant. Yeah, most of the best people are mad. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Mate, I'll look, I'll really uh, appreciate your time. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Lovely to uh, learn what's going on in your world and uh, yeah. hopefully a few people who are watching and uh, listening can uh, find some of your stuff. Um, thank you very much. And Cheers, man. That is Shafer Bates. Thank you. Over and out. Uh, we are Cat Fab Chats. Um, uh, having a Heineken with uh, Schaefer. Uh, big thanks to everyone that's downloaded, subscribed. I will put his uh, socials up all across ours so all four of our listeners and followers can find him and watch some of his content. And if you've got any requests, send them in. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll have a laugh and tell you to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You're damn fucking right, I will, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You'll do fucking nothing. <laughs> You'll do nothing. Uh, so yeah, a big thanks to everyone. Uh, please download, subscribe, uh, rate, and review. Uh, it's always um, appreciated, even if you do say it's fucking dog shit. Catch you next week. Over and out.